needed to wake up in a hospital in Birmingham. And you are disoriented. You don't know where your father is. You're worried about who's going to pay for your treatment. <laughs> You're amazed to be alive. You can't really remember exactly what happened. And you scribble notes to the nurses and the doctors on a piece of paper. When you opened your eyes, that first moment when you opened your eyes, did you immediately remember what had happened to you and what a miracle it was that you were still alive? This bullet that could have gone straight through your brain. When I woke up in Birmingham, I could see the doctors and nurses and they were speaking in English. And I realized that I'm no more in Pakistan and I'm no more in my homeland. And I was really happy. I thanked God. I thanked Allah that you were alive. That I'm alive and I'm breathing and I'm surviving. And then I was worried about the payment that who is going to pay for me. My father isn't here and these doctors are doing my treatment, but I don't have money to pay to them. And then in my dreams, I used to say, like, I'll go out and work hard and earn money. And then I'll call my father and I'll buy a phone. So I had such things in my mind. I thought my father isn't coming to UK because uh, he's asking people for loan or he might be selling the school building or the house building. But then I thought, like, the school and the house building is on rent. How can he sell it? So I was a bit worried about that, that who is going to pay for me. But... Then later on, my father came after 10 days, and uh, it was, uh, at that time, I, I was feeling that I'm a child, because when a child is born, uh, he cannot talk, and I could not talk when I, when I woke up, because there was a tube in my neck, and that tube was breathing for me. And then later on, when I started talking, my voice, my, the, my vo I used to talk very slow, and my accent and everything totally changed. I forgot many words from English. My behavior was like children. Did you panic when all this was happening? Were you scared? Will I be the same again? Will I be able to live the life I have known? The fact is that this time was very hard, but I was not, really, I was not scared at all. And I was really worried about my school exams in March. You were still thinking about your school yes. exams? And you know the fact? that we are really worried about or like uh, O levels and A level exams because it matters. And in Pakistan, we have metric exams. And I'm really worried about my uh, metric exams because when you get marks, it helps you to continue and go to the university. And I called one doctor and I asked them like, um, I need to call my, my father now and I have something very important to tell him. And my father was in Pakistan at that time and I think it was the ninth day uh, of me in the hospital in Birmingham. And I called my father and I said, Abba, uh, you are coming, I know, but please bring my physics book because those numericals and those mathematical questions are really, uh, I can't solve it, so I need to practice it now because in board exam I need to study. And I thought that I would be in UK just for a few months or like, even for one month. But how could you think of your physics exam when you had almost died? I don't know. At that time, still I am. I am. Uh, I don't think that I'm, I have been shot or some people are against me. Um, and at that time, I was not worried at all. I was thinking that I'm going back to uh, Pakistan. I'm going back to Swat. And I was not even thinking like Malala, they can shoot you again and they can do anything to you. My mind was really, uh, I was really hopeful at that time, and I'm still, uh, I'm hopeful now, and uh, I'm optimistic, and I believe that I'll go back to Pakistan. Did 